video of the new update navigational panel of the Neural Navigator. Uh, one feature that will be in the next release of NeuroGuide is whatever settings you select will be saved when you close the Navigator. And then when you open it, the same settings will be there. Uh, one of these settings is this one, uh, but you can, uh, in the top here, move to full, enter full screen, and you can navigate as you wish or exit. The electrical potential is at the scalp surface, and this is an individual who is assaulted and struck on the right parietal lobe. Uh, the, and he's uh, paralyzed on the left. He has spatial neglect. He does not see anything in the left side of the visual world. He does not shave the left side of his face. And he does not write on the left side of the paper. But as you change the cursor and move the cursor around, you'll be able to see up here the telegraphless coordinates, the Brobman area underneath the cursor, and the Z-score value or a raw score value, whichever you are looking at. This happens to be Z-scores in the right parietal lobe. You'll see that same information in the lower right corner here. You can save that information to a file. You can save it to clipboard. And as always in the past, you can right mouse click and copy the image and put to that in your clipboard. Or uh, you can also copy it into a, a file uh, with the uh, uh, text information that you see here. So you can put that in the clinical report. In any case, we, we have the scalp and the, uh, the electrical potential here. And if we want to alter this particular set of settings, we click Show Settings. And then uh, here we can see that uh, the cortex has been selected. Uh, the head model uh, has not. And the scalp has been selected down here. So we have objects, data type, theme, scale, and navigation. So I'm going to go through each of these very quickly. I'm going to uh, eliminate the scalp. We can make it transparent if we wish. We have the transparency control here, but I'm going to eliminate that. Now we just have the brain. I'm going to add the head to it, and I'm going to navigate through the head by clicking slices. In this case, the axial slice <clears throat> going from the bottom and, and top down. I can use other directions, but I'm going to do that one for now and then navigate through the uh, individual's brain. We can, uh, now right now this is uh, current source density. Uh, we can deselect that so we don't see any current source density. Uh, those are z-scores, but I'm going to keep those in. We can also look at connectivity. And um, I'm going to do that by evaluating the center voxels. And uh, right now I'm, I have selected uh, I'm going to select the anxiety network, and I'm going to make the cortex transparent, or I can make it disappear so it's easier to see the networks. So I just made it transparent. I'll just deselect it completely, and that's the network for anxiety. Here's the dorsal attention network. And uh, you can get an idea of where these networks are in terms of the coordinates by moving your cursor and, and looking at the Teller Atlas. You can also create more slices. I'm going to do the coronal and sagittal slices. And that way we can navigate through and see a little bit more detail about where the nodes and, and hubs of this network are located. and what relationship they have to the uh, deviant current source density uh, that is there as well. Uh, for, in this case, I've selected connectivity and also the current density, uh, but if I want to uh, evaluate that in more detail, uh, number one, I can look at the Laplacian at the scalp or the electrical potential, but I've eliminated the scalp, but if you want to, you can. I also can look at lag coherence or uh, phase differences, or uh, phase slope index of information flow, and we'll have both magnitude and direction in the future. And we can, and that's, this is all in the connectivity network. In this case, it's uh, we can it's a look at the default mode. Uh, we can look at the executive branch, or the executive mode, I mean, uh, language. Uh, here we see that the language uh, network of this particular one is in just in the left hemisphere. You can again navigate around.
and uh, the pain network, depression network, salience network. We also have uh, the, uh, the Catania and Deschotten uh, Diffusion Tensor Imaging Atlas. We look at their main hubs in their atlas and put them here as well. All of these networks that I just went through are based upon functional MRI and PET scans and the neurological literature with uh, strokes, tumors, and penetrating head wounds. The Hagman hubs are available as well. That's diffusion tensor imaging. You can examine those hubs with Z-scores. You can uh, control the scale of the Z-scores you're going to look at. In this case, we're looking at coherence. That's current source density. But if I click connectivity, now I'm looking at uh, there are, there's nothing significant about that five stem deviation. So I go to 2, 2.5. In uh, Hagman uh, module 2, you can see the deviant from normal. Uh, and these are all um, part of the Hagman. Um, this is actually Catania de Schotten and uh, the diffusion tensor imaging. And then we have the interconnectivity networks, 30,000 PET scans. Uh, we took the same coordinates that were published by Laird et al. and uh, used them as the starting points for this network. Now, we can also use this uh, control to navigate. We can change our, our mouse speed. Uh, we can uh, move the brain around, select this, and then the, you just look at the uh, uh, right hemisphere. This is just the left hemisphere. And uh, we can also go to uh, themes, and we can look at uh, gray or dark. Uh, and... Um, control uh, basically what we want. Here's, uh, we've, we've selected the um, uh, interconnectivity network, number two, and this is the outline of the Broadman areas that uh, make up that network. So we can select them or deselect them. We can select the center voxels or deselect the center voxels. Um, and we can um, uh, move around, changing scale, data type, and etc. very easily. Anytime we want, we can enter full screen if you want a complete view. And, uh, and if you want to just look at the volume and nothing else, then of course you can do that. I, I changed the mouse speed, so it's pretty slow. Uh, you can look at four view, all slices, just the axial, coronal, sagittal, Three view, just like the Key Institute, four view. You still have the, the file where you can save all of the, um, the 12,270 voxel values. Uh, you also have, a, and this is a tab delimited file, so is the connectivity file. Uh, you can also save the neurofeedback file. It's a .so5 file that you can then import into the uh, NeuroGuide uh, Loretta neurofeedback program to do neurofeedback. You can also do a movie over different uh, periods of time at different rates. Uh, and then uh, in the future, we'll expand on the help menu where you can have tutorials with various kinds of videos to help you uh, better understand uh, the navigator. I'm going to exit the full screen uh, and uh, go back to objects. And you can still have the ability to do depth from the top of the uh, cortex on down, uh, as we did in the past. That's one of the advantages of SW Loretta. It's a weighted S Loretta. And then you can uh, scan through the brain using this manual control, if you want. Or you can, of course, do it by uh, controlling your mouse. And any of the planes. So that's an update of the new um, navigation tools that allow you to um, control the, um, uh, the transparency of these different uh, systems and different objects inside the uh, viewer and uh, <clears throat> have easy control compared to having a drop-down menu like we had in the past. So there's a number of advances here, and we're always open to feedback 
and uh, we'll be giving more uh, detail on this in the future uh, with more videos and also we're getting ready for a workshop where we'll be covering this in 